Hi, this is Josh Johnson. This is my module five video. The first thing that we wanted to look at was some barriers using web 2.0 in 21st century schools. One of the things that they looked at was the administration support, as in most things I feel like that administration backing or not backing is going to become very critical for anything to be supportive. And without it, you're going to find a rather difficult time making something work. This goes for anything technology, classroom-based, whatever it might be. But this is definitely going to happen in web-based. Lack of training. If you don't have the proper training to use the tool, it's kind of impossible to take it and use it. I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. But at the same time, when schools throw out uh, technology and, and forms, typically it's kind of throw it on you. And so the lack of training is a barrier definitely to using technology in schools. Lack of training support. So after they've trained you, what bothers me a lot when I'm using something new and it's relatable, once someone has been trained to take care of something, then they need support to smooth it out. So in case in point, as we were given in Piro this last week, and uh, we need the backup from our IT department to continue to eliminate problems that we're facing within the technology. The seven common barriers that obstruct tech adoption in education, vision. If you're just going to throw it out there and just like have it in a big jumble mess of soup, uh, that doesn't really help anything. Why are we using it? What's it for? What's the vision for it long term? Uh, what's the benefits of it? And basically, how do we communicate the, that to our staff, kids, and community? not simply just as administrators. The teacher's role, it's going to change a ton. The second we start introducing more and more and more technology in schools, you're going to see the teacher have a dramatic shift in their role. It's no longer going to be about them. It's going to be very student-centered, but it's also going to be extremely adaptive and differential. The achievement gap, not everybody is going to have access to the same thing. Not everybody's going to have access. And so we have to prepare ourselves for that. That's going to be a huge problem that we face. It could be a socioeconomical deal. It could be a geographical issue. Yeah, the, the problems with the achievement gap is also measurable. You know, when you get into that, those things. Financial investment. You take a, a school in inner city, Kansas City or Wichita, that has maybe a little bit more funding, but they have more students to reach. Uh, you're, you're talking about once you get in this, it's, it's, it's like an arms race. You can't get out of it. You just have to keep spending, spending, spending. And that means our budget's going to have to grow, which is a huge argument. Innovations. Like I said, once you get into these things, you have to find the next thing because what you have today is going to be outdated two years from now. Really, it's outdated the second you get it because you're getting it late. But at the same time, innovations are going to be a hindrance or a barrier because you're going to need the next thing to prepare your students or prepare your teachers for your students. Beyond the textbook. And this is similar to teacher's role because in the past, you know, the textbook was our go-to. It's kind of like the Bible in the classroom kind of thing. And now what you're really forced to do as teachers or even as students is view the textbook as a tool, just like the technology would be. And that, that's a shift in mindset. So that's going to take some time, maybe a, a few years for some before they catch on to that idea. Support system in place. This kind of goes back to the IT department and what they can do. Um, but not only from the IT level, but also from your fellow PLC members, uh, not just laterally across your building, but also horizontally, well, vertically throughout your district. You know, how are you getting support? Are the people using this material? Are they, are they introducing it at the right age? Is there growth with the students? So those things also need to be there as well. The digital divide. Not every student, even though we live in 2018, or every parent, every family, whatever it might be, is going to have access to anything digital or technology-based. Location could be a factor. I know here in southwest Kansas that is not necessarily a major factor, but it can be. You know, up until the last 10, 12 years or so, grain bins, silos were having issue getting Wi-Fi, and so they had to learn how to create basically like a small hotspot in some of their places out here because you couldn't get service. Well, this could be the same for our kids. You know, you're looking at them not being able to get access 24-7 like you and I can or potentially the school. 
finances, it costs money. It, it, this is not a public service or a public good. This is something people pay for, and that's not necessarily a luxury that some families can afford. I mean, we have a school district that's two-thirds below the poverty line. That's high, and they don't have money to spend. If they're going to choose between food and Internet or tech, they're going to pick the food, hopefully, because they need to provide for their families. Government intervention, we see this a lot today, you know, uh, 90s, maybe not so much because it was not such of an issue. But today you have all these laws. Um, in the past few years we've had the ability to see where some of these laws are limiting us or uh, mandates are coming from as well as what people need. And so there's a big divide there. Company power. You're seeing a shift recently in this idea that companies are strictly for their bottom line as opposed to the good for the people that they serve. But I think that's going to change as, as you move throughout. You have some good entrepreneurs out there that are helping. Open educational resources. They are extremely cost effective because you're not talking about uh, going out and have to repurchase things over and over and over again. So that allows our cost to be minimal which is a benefit to students, again, who do not have a ton of money to spend on some of these resources, or teachers in some cases who do not have a ton of money to spend on resources outside of their classroom or their families and so forth. Remove corporate interaction. You're seeing a change in this. So it takes out that middleman, so this idea that you're having to read through the bias of the information and, and teach or uh, educate or lead through that. Now, you're moving away from that, and you're able to get to what exactly impacts your kids, your community, your school. Collaborative interac interaction. In my experience with this, this is big because you're allowing teachers to begin to bundle resources together and then they can build on it, they can change it. It becomes almost this living document kind of thing that's taking place. I think the benefits of that are huge. Angela McFarland's video was mostly spent for primary versus secondary schools and the use of technology in there. In primary, you're going to have smaller classes. You're going to have more time because you're going to have them longer to, uh, in theory. Now, I know some schools may be different in this case, but that's the time there. Um, in the experience that I've seen, technology is harder to integrate in the younger grades because of the inability of usage matching up with the teacher. Because right now, especially in our district, we have a high volume of more experienced teachers in the younger grades and newer teachers as you go through secondary school. Just a tidbit. Can a digital divide be overcome? Uh, you know, I think so. I think innovation is creating some avenues where people can, uh, in the example that I gave, you know, you have the silos and the grain bins looking for ways to create internet access. I think there's ways to do that. And I think as we move forward, that will be the case. Now, cost is going to be a concern because when you have innovation, typically you have this rising cost problem. Equal access, uh, there's a huge push for equal access, maybe even creating it as a public good, which is, might be more expensive, might not be. That's up for debate. The greater focus on access, not monetary gain. People are looking at how they can create a culture of learning within their schools, uh, kids, programs that benefit them because businesses are seeing a, a shift now so they have to have these skills they're not getting them when we don't have access to them so they're starting to invest as well in some of this area i think it's being created to make it more available in the end and i, I think you're also seeing people invest in people and not simply what they have as far as their profit loss prior to graduation uh, you know this is pretty vague I think this depends on the student and the career path to a degree, not necessarily for all things, but you know, in some cases you're going to have students use more skills in this area as opposed to another. Basic knowledge. You know, honestly, how do you turn the silly thing on? How do you use it, those things? What's the manual? What's the language it's written in? Because even though it's English or Spanish, whatever it might be, it's not written in a language that you and I would understand on a day-to-day -day basis. So we have to understand those things. Different functions. Not everything's intended to be used for one application. So how do we apply those in different places? Ability to understand technical language. You know, what is that? What do those things mean to me when I read them off the page as opposed to simply what do they say? How can I use them? And then, of course, digital citizenship. Far too often our kids get locked up in this social media 
blitz that they get faced with. Not, and not just that, but how do they properly use their technology at work? You know, we have a, a one-to-one initiative at the high school. We have to teach kids how to properly manage their time on their technology. Well, you get a job in life, and it's going to be the same concept, just in a different setting. Global economy, economy impact. Uh, I think you have great things coming from this. There's also some bad increased opportunities. You have this m uh, massive amount of awareness that's developing uh, economically because you have these shortages, but you also have this opportunity because you have an interest. There's also diverse areas that are coming about. Places where 20 years ago people wouldn't even dream of having opportunities or as an impact. Um, some issues would be, of course, though, that you're starting to see funds being spread more broad, and so you're having less money to spend. There's also this generalized understanding as opposed to diving in and giving the kids or the students, the teachers, the administration, the basics of what's going on. We're just trying to get this mainstream idea pushed out. And then uh, the highly specialized area as well. You're starting, you're, you're losing potentially a well-rounded sort of like kids playing sports as opposed to playing one. They, and they don't have that idea of how to put together a whole person as opposed to a, a part. Technology training. I think that uh, training has limited benefits. Uh, you, you cannot simply throw training out there and assume that everyone's going to get it. That just doesn't happen. I, my best training that I've ever received is from people in my building, district, region, who have used the same material or different material and bring in and apply it. That's great. I think classroom management, it's a huge problem because people don't know how to deal with this, how to integrate it. And so that's going to be something that I think they need to learn as opposed to what's a new tech that they can throw in. And then I think project-based learning and project-based teaching techniques needs to be involved too, not simply just in some of the more industrialized classes, but also some of the more mainstream core classes need to be talked about school equipment i think it's a yes and no we have computers we have cameras we have all these things but we also have limited access we don't have 24 7 access for our kids they have limited access to receive it use it manage it and i think that's problematic advantage you get student engagement i think the teaching style increases i think your ability increases uh, I think those are advantages. You have real-time instruction to the kids. There's also an interconnectivity when you look at uh, different places where you can pull resources. Disadvantages of innovation, you lose the personal skills. You lack social skills. You cannot connect with people outside of your computer screen or your cell phone and those things. Financial limits, you know, just because something's great to do doesn't mean we can always do it. So there's some limits there. And then limited containment, how do I just focus in one area? and build upon it. Uh, those things are also there. Uh, I think every teacher in the world has found some form of in, uh, inappropriate behavior. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't list the top four that I think I, I've experienced. I've seen adult content displayed on uh, in technology being used to create as well as distribute and I've had to report those things. A sexual behavior has been there as well. You know you can take the the bad, there's there's always going to be some bad things so that we can focus on it, but there's also positives. Now, bullying's definitely been a part of it, both cyber, uh, physically, but it could result from cyber, you know, vice versa, those things. And then discrimination, of course. Uh, our kids do not have access to these things, not 100%, 80% will not, 20% might. And so there's a level of discrimination that these other kids have to deal with, and so we have to deal with that on some level, too, that can lead to some bullying. All in all, great project. I uh, look forward to reading and seeing everyone else's videos. Best of luck.